back to the Remote No Pressure podcast, Bill. It's great to see you. Hey, good to be back. We got some we got some interesting feedback on on our uh, YouTube channel. Someone told us to iron our curtains behind us. Are you are, are you or me? One of the two said, "Hey, please iron your curtains." Mm. So I made sure to iron this morning. I did yeah. not. You I uh, I changed. Yeah, my wife changed curtains, and it's it's still wrinkly it's on, still, purpose. on purpose. I actually did that. I'm a rebel. <laughs> I don't need your stinking feedback. No, but today, <laughs> but I did. I did. I I wanted to look nice. You know, I I wanted to to to. to Look nice. How's how's everything going for you, man? Are you, you haven't gone crazy yet? Not yet. We're doing good. Still alive. Well, that's good. That's good. How is everything in the grow room? Oh, it's still growing. Uh, you can't see in this the camera we're talking on. You can see the pink. Uh huh. Over yeah. there. Uh huh. Yeah. Are those? Yep. Is that it's, pink? We're, we're are doing those really lights? good. Are those? Is that pink lights? Yeah. Wow. Yep. Very well, interesting. Well, it's, it's grow lights. Turns out pink on the camera, but it's it's grow lights. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, why why does it turn out pink spectrum. like that? I don't know. Cameras see different from your eyes. Okay. I, I'm looking. Mm-hmm. I'm actually not looking directly at the computer camera like you are. I'm actually looking at our other camera here in the studio. So if it looks kind of mm-hmm. weird and I'm not paying attention, I noticed that on our YouTube channel, I don't look at the camera enough. And last mm-hmm. week I noticed with that episode, you were looking directly in the camera. It looked really good. I felt engaged, but then I was not looking and I didn't feel like I was engaging with myself mm-hmm. as I was watching. So you, that, you, gotta you weren't engaging with yourself. I wasn't oh. engaging with myself. You mean <laughs> yourself being the viewer, or like yeah, me, kind myself of- being a viewer. You know, so today I'm really looking at the camera. I'm trying to do things, but we're always trying to improve things. One of the things I'd love to improve yeah. is our backdrop for sure. I know it was wrinkled, but I don't know if we have any graphic <laughs> designers out there who would like to maybe design something for us. But that's definitely not my forte. I'm not a gifted artist that way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are are you? I mean, are you like a, a knickknack guy? I mean, I know you've done some cool stuff at your job. Did you design those backgrounds and stuff, or someone else does that? No, I got a guy who does lighting, who does all the backdrops. Yeah, that's a, yep. that's an art for sure. It is. I can't I'm even, not a graphic person. I can't even think of that. I can't even think of how you know. Whoa, I don't know what I should do. But you know, any suggestions from our viewers? Feel free to to reach out to send us an email, um, and we would love to. If we use your design, we'll obviously promote the crap out of everything you do. So mm-hmm. be sure to be sure to let us know, Bill. But hey, um, I got an interesting in other news. <laughs> Marilyn, uh, let me ask you this, Bill. When you go to get your mail, do you go with pants on or pants off? Pants on. Pants on? I do, too. I, I, I Every time I go to the mailbox, I attempt to go with pants on unless there's something um, in my system that keeps me from thinking straight. But I've... I've oh, uh, I follow. But, but anyway, so Marilyn says, put your pants on when you go out to get your mail. This is their final warning. Uh, Who's Marilyn? Marilyn. You mean the state? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Please remind residents. Isn't that your neighbor, Marilyn? Marilyn, yeah. (laughs) Marilyn, please, yeah, please put your pants on, Marilyn, because my neighbor's like 80 years old. Her name's Sue. She's like 80. Please keep your pants on, Marilyn. Uh, No, but Marilyn, uh, put your pants on when you go get your mail. Police remind residents of a Maryland town uh, wearing pants has become optional for some people hold up indoors while obeying the stay at home order. Police department in another uh, in a northern Maryland town is reminding residents that an option uh, that is not an option when they go outside. The Taney Police Department left a message on Facebook page Wednesday morning telling residents to put their pants on when they leave their homes. (laughs) Quote, please remember to put pants on before leaving the house to check your mailbox. You know who you are. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know who you are. This is your final warning. It's probably somebody's neighbor. Yeah. If they know who they are. Uh, the post drew more than 600 comments and 4,000 shares within the day it was posted. Many responded with silly gifts like the Winnie the Pooh dancing captioning, life's too short for <laughs> pants. Others <laughs> others said wearing underwear outside is legal and police should redirect their focus to more important matters. NBC Washington reached out to Tannytown Police for comment, but nothing has been reached. Uh, in Maryland, indecent exposure is defined as intentionally showing one's genitals in public and in the presence of others. A conviction can lead to a fine of up to $3,000 or three years behind bars. Question about underwear. I mean, if you don't have your pants on and you're not showing your genitals, I guess that's, technically it would not be indecent exposure, correct? According to those rules? Correct. Uh, according to those rules, yeah. Yeah. 
Have you ever have you ever did anything crazy like streaking or anything like that? No, not that I can talk about on here. Really? <laughs> no, I haven't. I have. Well, if you guys tune into our YouTube channel, we're going to cut this part out. This is going to be premium content about uh, <laughs> no, totally kidding, but go to our Patreon. <laughs> go to our Patreon. <laughs> and I will also show you pictures of my feet for <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm, I've got so many things in my head. I'm trying to refrain from going too far. That's, you know, that's wise. That's wise. I mean, hey, that has got to pay the bills. Do you know what I mean? We're in a desperate situation with COVID nineteen, and these, you know, these feet aren't going to sell themselves. We've we've created a nice audience. We've built a, a a distribution channel. I think it's time for the feet to come out. These are some. Now's the perfect time too. Everybody's just at home. <laughs> Okay, here's an idea. Here's an idea. This is dumb. This is nothing with fly fishing. This is I got this idea, okay? Now, I thought about creating like um, a TV show. Or, or not a TV channel, but like a pay, like p- private access type thing. Kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And what it is, is I, I, I install, someone's going to steal this idea probably. And if they do, please let me know because I, I think I would laugh my head off. But what I would like to do is I would like to take some cameras, like some GoPros or something like that, and put them like at ankle level. Right. And mm-hmm. people can like tune in at any time and see if we're walking by, you know, if, if maybe like you're into feet, cause I'm willing to show my feet. <laughs> I'm not willing to show my genitalia for money, uh, but I'm willing to show my feet. So if you got a foot fetish, you know, you can log in anytime for a live feed. Uh, and you don't know, maybe I'm getting ready, you know, and I can put different cameras in different places, you know, one in the bathroom, you know, you can see kind of a towel cover them. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you can tell he's been held up for a long time because his toenails are long. <laughs> uh, ooh, that hair wasn't there yesterday. <laughs> he's really let himself go. <laughs> oh, you know, and if you're if, if that's something you enjoy, I'm okay to show a little uh, toe cleavage. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm willing to do whatever it takes to, to keep the remote no pressure on the air. I, I almost had to take the podcast down. Couldn't afford to keep it going. So that's what I'm going to tell my wife. Hey, I know these. it's weird that we got these cameras in here, but reality is reality. You know, we got to pay the bills. Got to show some toe. Got to show some toe. <laughs> <laughs> Got to show the toe. <laughs> big toe peep show that's what it's going to be called the big toe peep show that should be a t-shirt right there oh yeah you know the thing is though my ankles are too sexy but have you ever seen those people that have cankles where mm-hmm. there is no ankle but it's like the it's like the um the calf go a calf like a, the calf goes, goes right, into the foot. right into the foot like a lego almost and there is no ankle <laughs> Like a Lego. Yeah. Those are the sexy ones. Those are the sexy ankles. Those are the square <laughs> ones. Little fat hanging over the side like a like a rhinoceros skin. This has nothing to do with now I'm trying to Now I'm trying to picture rhinoceros cankle. A rhino cankle where like the fat mm. is like is like going over like your ankle. So wow. it looks like it's a shell. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> That I, one I don't. I'd, I'd pay to see that. I'd pay. I'd pay to see that one. <laughs> and if they could turn like turn colors, and money's tight right now. <laughs> money's I'd pay tight. To see that. Money's tight. Money's tight, and I'd pay to see that. <laughs> if you got some big big toe to show today, shoot me an email, Jeff T at remote no pressure dot com. Big we'll bucks. Post them. <laughs> Big bucks. Got to show the toe. It's the new hashtag. Show the toe, baby. Uh, but We're going to see that popping up now, aren't we? Yeah. But I don't want to see like nice, normal, sexy toes. I mean, let's see that funky stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, you know what I'm saying? I want them chubby. I want them hairy. You know? What's that Bilbo Baggins? I want that Bilbo Baggins toe. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Show the toe, Bilbo! <laughs> that is the new hashtag. 
What do you think, though? I mean, do you think people would pay <laughs> to have like ankle height cameras in my throughout my house? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'd tune in for that. Well, I wouldn't, and you wouldn't, but there's got to be someone out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's someone. Yeah. You'll have like three subscribers. Three subscribers at $300 each a month. Mm -hmm. Two of them in Thailand. (laughs) (laughs) They just program my feed to to distribute it to everybody else. It's in sports bars over there. (laughs) 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 Oh, how my friends come over at big toe parties. Like everyone takes off their socks. Never seen that one before. <laughs> Very unique. Yeah. You ever watch? You watch South Park? You ever see the, the TSA episode? Oh, a long time ago. Yeah. The guys like the guys in the camera room. I don't know if you remember that. And he's like, uh uh-uh. uh. Okay, I digress. You guys can look <laughs> it up. Speaking of cartoons, you ever been cartooned? You ever go to those places where they um draw a caricature? Yeah, draw a caricature. Mm-mm. Never. No. You ever, you've seen it done though, right? I have seen it done, yeah. I think you'd make a great caricature. Ah, uh, that's thoughtful. I don't know. Maybe that's a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I think it would. I, uh, but this guy this week, Nate Carnes, is going to talk to us this week. He's a fly angler, but he's also a passionate, um, a passionate um, artist. And he, he has a website uh, called Remedy Provisions where he sells his artwork on different pieces of stuff. Mm. But he tuned me this week. I look like a cartoon. Whoa! And he cartooned Brandon Bales, Davin Topol, Aaron Reed, Chris Barclay. Did I already say Brandon Bales? Yeah, all of us. He wow. Tuned. Yeah, and I put Are a special. I put a special request in for you too, Bill. We'll see how yours comes oh. out. Oh, thoughtful. Thank still, you. Still waiting on that. And I, it looks like we're from Scooby Doo. Oh, really? Yeah, it looks pretty sweet. Yeah, That's I think we should cool. need to. We need to do an R and P animated series. When I was at Founders, there was a guy who did the whole staff there. Right before I got there, he did everybody on staff. Oh, and they really? Had had them all posted up over the bar. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. That's a bummer you missed out. You were that I close. Know. I know. We we my son did it with my wife uh, when he was little. He was probably two years old. Mm-hmm. And uh, wow, it's a great. It's it's still cool. I still look at it all the time. You know, it's just like huh. a cool. We keep it in a file cabinet because I'm not gonna frame that and put it on my wall. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's my kid. I see him every day. <laughs> that means I got to take pictures of the toe down and then like. <laughs> you should have your toe caricature. Yes. A, a good caricature of my toe. <laughs> no one wants to see my toes, bro. <laughs> you say that, but your TV show, your network's going to take off. The net, the network's going to, mm-hmm. what, what should we call the network though? Is, is big toe, the big toe peep show, right? I think that's it. The Big Toe Peep Show. Mm-hmm. God, they're going too far with this crap. Oh, hey, Nate Carnes <laughs> is here this week. Very happy to have him. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Let's light the fire. Talking shop or whatever, it it uh, it just kind of clicks. And I think that's some of what, I don't know that I've been that successful really, but the things that I enjoy about my art and the things I do it, there's there's that commonality that we share a little bit and people either get the joke or you know <laughs> un, you know understand it's a little bit of inside baseball maybe but people get it you know and if you get right. it you get it and if you don't then you don't and that's okay yeah yeah i'm gonna just push record we can just keep talking kind of keep it natural. okay yeah actually um I, i'm a musician so i did uh, that that's like my art right and so i'm a songwriter okay. so i did an album a couple of years ago called songs about fly fishing Okay. And um and so now I put together this little band and I'm trying to come up with a name and one of them is uh the Parachute Adams band, you know. Because it's <laughs> it's a great name if you don't know what fly fishing's about. Yeah. And then if you know what fly fishing's about, you're like, "Heck yeah, I'm going to go to that concert cuz these guys fly fish." <laughs> um and so that's what I've been like working on like, okay, like you said inside baseball, you know, there's uh-huh. and, and even as an an artist as a writer like I'll write music and I'll I'll throw stuff in there that's fly fishing related, but yet my wife can listen to it and she doesn't know, you know, that, that, uh, that I'm talking about a fly, you know, uh, Uh an Adam's fly or, you know, something like that or, you you know, um, but yet 
if you fly fish and you listen to the music, you're like, oh, that's sweet. You know, yeah, <laughs> it's I, like know, yeah, it's like, I know exactly what he's I know exactly <laughs> what he's talking about. That's cool. Yeah, exactly. Have you always been like, I mean, I mean, first of all, I appreciate you tuning uh, T O O ing us tuning us. <laughs> uh, and my question to you is like you, uh, Aaron Reed had sent me a picture of me, Davin Topol, um, Chris Barclay. Uh, yeah. And him. And also, I saw Brandon Bales as well. The question is, I mean, when is the remote no pressure animated series coming out? That's what I want to know. Because <laughs> it, it looks like need, <laughs> might need to happen sooner than, rather than later. We're all just kind of sitting around. So <laughs> it looks like <laughs> Scooby Doo. You know, I was like, oh my gosh, we could totally be because car- you did such a great job, you know, making cartoons out of us. I'm like, that is so amazing. And then Brad Boone's like, I look like Velma because he's got perfect hair, you know, and you put, like that big. He does. Fluff, I mean, he- <laughs> well, when uh, Aaron, I did Aaron, I think first or I did Brandon Bales. I don't remember which, but just Aaron and I have been just kind of messaging back and forth a little bit. And he was like, hey, you think maybe you could do do some of my fishing buddies? I was like, man, I just love doing them. So yeah, shoot them to me. And I said, it'll, it'll really be helpful if none of them are pretty. And he <laughs> said, well, I don't hang out with any pretty people. But. So, but I don't know, you know, I started with Boone. I was like, he's, the, he's definitely the prettiest of the bunch. So we've got to start there because pretty people tend to be a little more difficult to uh-huh. draw. So started with him and then worked my way down. But uh, I was the very last person Aaron told me. So he said, do, do the math. He, he's like, he started with the prettiest guy and he did you last. So do, do the, uh, yeah, you, you figure that one out. <laughs> exactly. I was like, oh, oh my God. So, so is that something you've always been involved in, like in school or how did you get into, to, to, to drawing like that? So I'm, I'm weird in that. I, there are some things I do left-handed and there are some things I do right-handed and uh-huh. I've always written and drawn left, left hand. So what I figured out is I'll do precision things left-handed and I'll do strength things right-handed. And so, uh, you said you're, a, you're a musician. I play guitar so that I play guitar right-handed because you know, the intricate part is and I'm not a great guitarist, but the intricate part is the left hand really. Right. And so I've just always drawn, I don't know, and always getting in trouble for it in school, not paying attention or whatever. <laughs> I've never been diagnosed with anything that <laughs> that says I can't pay attention, but sometimes just drawing helps me do that. And so mm-hmm. these kind of cartoon things just started cuz I've been sitting in Zoom meetings in front of my computer and you know <laughs> there'll be 12 people on the screen and uh, I had my iPad there sitting beside me while I was in a meeting and looked at, I can't remember who I, who I drew first, but I was like, I'm just going to try to draw a caricature. Uh, <laughs> and it just kind of started from there on. I would do, do little drawings and meetings. And then as my life tends to be, I, I like to try to make it about fishing if I can. And so and I was like, I should do just people uh, that I know in the fishing world. And so I started with, uh, I think I did Brandon Bales first and Chris Barclay and just, I've just kind of gotten to know those guys, honestly, uh, through social media, really. I've hung out with Chris one time and, uh, Brandon and I message back and forth a little bit. I just love the flies that he ties and how oh, yeah. he's able to do what he does, man. It's just incredible to me. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. He sent up a few, a few to me after our podcast and what he can do with deer hair is like, golly, it's crazy, isn't it? I'm just like, what the heck, man? <laughs> and some of them that's like so small. I know big flies, you know, people love to tie huge flies and streamers or whatever, but how, how, intricate and small his are and how precise still it's just i don't know it's unbelievable well yeah and didn't you um didn't you develop um his um crawl his uh what is it called his His hatchling crawl didn't you do a decal for him so sweet dude yeah yeah that's that that's been uh it's only been a couple weeks since we did that one and then uh, it's probably been a year or so i i did a i call it a bomb popper i don't know what brandon calls it but to me, it looked like a, you know, those, uh, bomb popper ice cream cones you used to get from the ice cream truck when it drive by, it just had the same colors. And I was like, it just looks like a bomb popper to me. So <laughs> it that's does. what I call it. <laughs> so I did that one and he was like, Hey, you, you think we, we could do a hatchling crawl? I was like, heck yeah. It's, so I looked up some pictures and I don't think his actually has eyes, but they got to have eyes to make them look mean and <laughs> set it by a penny. And it's just fun. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I, I can't wait to use my, it's, I'm in Michigan and it, it snowed last night, like an inch. So oh, man. Um, our, our crawfish aren't out yet. 
I'm waiting for the water to warm up a little bit, but I, I am, yeah. I love, I love bat like smallmouth bass fishing and just warmer water. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm in trout heaven or whatever, but and I, I know there's lots of trout here and they're a lot of fun, you know, but I really enjoy, I really enjoy like wet wading. Yeah, me too. It, it's just, I don't know. Maybe it's just cause I grew up in Texas and I don't know. And the older I get, the less I just want to be cold. So steelhead <laughs> fishing is just, I go a few times, steelhead fishing a few times a year and then I get sick of it cause I'm just cold, you know, and yeah, miserable. Yeah. So that's, that was the thing for me when I started fly fishing, you know, I went up to this, the smoky mountains up in the park there and I had a, a friend who took me the very first time and I, we fished for, I don't know, nine hours. I had no idea what I was doing, but we were wet wading on a little stream. And after about nine hours, I think I caught like a, uh, like a four inch rainbow trout, but I was like, Oh man, I'm done. Like, this is it. I love it so much. I have to do it. And so, uh, and then just wet. I think the thing I like about uh, your podcast and it seems like what you're about is just getting out back, back away from people. Like I know social distancing is a thing right now, but it's like, man, I was kind of built for that. I like, I like that <laughs> side of it anyway, you know? And so yeah. finding, finding little streams that you can just kind of bushwhack into and, you know, catch, they're not going to be what some would consider trophy fish, but man, it's so great to, to just be there and to be in, in the environment. So that's good. Yeah. I think we're all like you said, you know, what connects me with Brad and all those guys, um, yeah. you know, and Aaron, we're all kind of like that. I mean, if you even take a look at Chris Barclay's decal says slow down uh -huh. on there, you know, uh huh. And, and that really is the mindset that I'm shooting for now, right now it's my, I'm having some real mind, um, screwing to me because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make this a family podcast. Um, but there's some real games that play on in your head because y you are so slow, you know, and it's mm -hmm. not a choice, but people have had to slow down. And I think there's a lot of positives not coming out of that as well. You know, more time with your family, things like that. Right. Yeah, I've seen several times, I think over even the last couple of days, just this, this on one hand, you want to return to normal, but on the other hand, you're like, but I want to consider what actually needs to return, you know, mm -hmm. before I just go back to the way things were. Because there's, I, th I think it's been an eye opening thing for a lot of us is it's difficult, but there's also some, there's some good things in what's happening right now as far as just reevaluating maybe the things that were important in life and, and, hoping not to go back to, to it, you know, to some of those things and, and kind of re reprioritizing, I guess. For sure. Now, now, um, you do have a 20 year old Toyota. Um, I do. <laughs> what, what, what kind of Toyota is it? It's a Tacoma. So yeah, I got a, uh, it's got 260,000 miles on it. I think oh I put gosh. a, put a camper shell on it so I can uh, sleep in the back when I need. And of course yes. I got it before I got married. I've had it for, I mean, I've had it for 20 years now, oh. uh, but, uh, yeah, when I was in Amarillo, I was telling you when I moved to Texas, I, I was like, I got to be able to go to the mountains and go fishing or something. So mm -hmm. I got that truck, I put a shell on it so I could just hop in the back and sleep at night and get up in the morning, go fishing and then come back home. But yeah, it's got yeah. a busted handle on it right now on the driver's side. So I have to like wedge my fingers up into the the opening to get it to open but it's kind of a security system too it's a manual transmission so nobody Sweet. can drive it anyway so <laughs> yeah that's the millennial security uh security it, right you think yeah and it keeps people from borrowing your truck too because you're like ah it's a standard can you <laughs> like never mind <laughs> you call it the standard you cause it some you know it, it's funny because that used to be the standard it came you had to pay extra for an automatic transmission <laughs> that's right you, you know what i mean i, I and yeah. i think that's where the word standard came from was like okay this is the standard truck you know and, and that's all i can think of you know instead of five speed but right um but yeah i haven't drove a five uh, a five speed or standard in years you know my dad had a nissan stanza uh that was a five speed and i have a broken hip i just very little i can do with my left leg like that but i'd make it work so i could drive it because he wouldn't let me drive the new caravan you know <laughs> 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 oh my gosh but yeah it's really funny like why do you think that tacoma is the quintessential fly fishing uh and this is a very he this is very controversial subject but why do you think the <laughs> toyota tacoma is such a the uh, the quintessential flight fly fishing automobile i don't know that's a great question I, I think it's they they run forever when i take it to my mechanic to, to you know i had to 
do some routine kind of stuff on it when it's got that much that many miles it's like yeah you're gonna have to do this to it but my mechanic's like man you keep the oil change this motor will just keep going so Mm -hmm. i think that's some of it uh it's their four-wheel drive uh you can get back into some some places if you need to i don't know i I don't my truck does not fit in where i live at all (laughs) Uh, you know i live in southwest missouri and people a lot of times because i've got the camper or the camper shell on it with a roof rack that i can put put gear on top of and all that stuff and it's not it's not anything fancy but but uh when i go to colorado or some other place you know that that tends to value those things they're like oh i see them all the time now (laughs) but i don't i don't know why it's just a just kind of something that's happened, I guess. I don't. I, you got any theories on it? I don't. That's my dream truck. <laughs> I mean, I had a I had a Highlander with two hundred thousand miles on it. Yeah, I traded it in for a tiny little Eco Toyota Corolla because I was traveling for work a lot and I get like fifty uh-huh. miles a gallon. And then I have a Toyota Camry that I've had for twelve years. That's like that's got two hundred and two hundred thousand yeah. miles on it. You know, it's it's beige. <laughs> we call it old man tan. You know what I mean? Because yep. it's just it's ugly, but the thing you 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 get rid of it because you just get tired of looking at it. You know what I mean? It's not because <laughs> it's broken. It's just I'm kind of bored with this thing, you know. But but it is a great reliable vehicle. And but the reason I brought that up is because your particular Toyota Tacoma does have a tape deck in it, and you were listening to to Robert Earl yeah. Keen. Are you a big Rek fan? I you know since I was lived in Texas for a while, I started listening to Robert Earl Keen, and yeah, love. I love him. It's so great. I just love listening to him. And it's kind of a, uh, something in, it's like a rite of passage every year in my truck. You know, I'll listen, <laughs> I, li- I pull, I don't pull out the tape deck, you know, I don't play anything on it during the winter time. It's the windows have got to be down and, uh, you've got to, you got to play Robert Earl Keen. I've got like a bootleg version of picnic i think and then walking distance and i don't even know why those are the two albums but they <laughs> they fit they fit on the tape and so just keep just keep playing them while you while you drive with the windows down do, do you listen to any of his other, do you listen to any other texas artists or is that pretty much the main one uh no i i do like texas song so, singers and songwriters um of course with the passing of john prine here uh, last couple of weeks, uh, he's he's been somebody that I've listened to, but not like as extensively probably as I have since he passed. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, uh, Cross Canadian Ragweed was another one that uh, we used to listen to pretty regularly. I think they're from up in the Panhandle somewhere. Uh-huh. But uh, a Slad Cleaves is actually probably another one of my very favorite ones that I listen to regularly. Oh, that's um, great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it, music is a big part. Like I, I break out. I, I'm kind of like you. I don't listen to it in the winter time uh-huh. that much. Robert Earl Keen, anyways. You know, I'll listen to John Prine because he's depressing, and then that's good for the <laughs> that's good for the winter time here. You know. Yeah. But whenever like that first when I first moved to Michigan, I wanted to make this. I wanted I wanted some brisket. I moved here in '02, and there was no barbecue places here at all. Mm-hmm. And I needed like I needed some brisket, so I had to learn how to make it on my own. So I've got a nice barbecue pit out back and then, uh, and then it look, overlooks like a cornfield and everything, you know, typical Midwest, yeah, but typical yeah, <laughs> so, Michigan. Yeah, exactly. So I, in the spring I come out, I turn on feeling good again and I start my brisket. That's like, it's good. That's right? my, <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's warm enough. <laughs> I crack myself open a cold beer, sit on the patio and just watch the smoke roll, listening to REK. And that's like, the best feeling, you know, my wife's like, what do you want for your birthday? I said, I want to smoke a brisket and be left alone and just listen to <laughs> R.E.K. all day. That's like, <laughs> that's what I want to do, you know? That's but, so great. Yeah. So you live in Southwest Missouri there. That's um, where I live so now. Like near yeah. Joplin or? Yeah. So I live about 20 minutes north of Joplin outside of a, a little, well, the town, like my address is Orinogo, which is a uh, that's an old mining town that they don't mine anymore, but north of Webb city, which is like a, a football powerhouse as right. far as the state of Missouri is concerned. Uh, Grant Wistrom who, uh, played for, oh, the Rams, I think. And, uh, the Seahawks, maybe, maybe one other, he, he went to the the high school where my kids will go. And the, Car- so the Cardinals, right? Yeah. The Cardinals, they, yeah. they won the state championship this past year. They win it pretty regularly there i mean as far that and it's not it's more of a system thing i feel like there's not a lot of incredible athletes they just they run a they run a veer offense and just know what they're supposed to do so it's pretty right. incredible it reminds me of, of texas you know because uh 
Friday night lights, of course, but it's just, uh-huh. it is a big deal. Friday nights going, going to the football game or, or whatever. And that's, that's the way it is here. That's what everybody does in the little town. That's really so, cool. Pretty yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. My buddy, my buddy lives there. Uh, I think it's kids go to web city actually. Oh really? Yeah. And that's how I know the Cardinals, you know, cause how else would I know that? But his kid goes there. We, we were friends since college. We're like best friends and he, he doesn't fly fish. So, um, well, that's too bad. It is too bad, but, uh, but he, he lives there in, in web city. And then I got another close friend of mine from, he's from channel view, Texas, where, where I, you know, close to where I graduated. I graduated from North shore high school, but, um, he's okay. from channel view, which was kind of our rival and he lives there in web city as well. So it's kind of weird to have two friends from two different walks of life, both living huh. in that area, you know, that's crazy. But, but what, what do you see? Like, I, I know that you had mentioned, um, you know, you just kind of check out with uh, the art and stuff, but do you see mm-hmm. a lot of similarities between your art and fly fishing? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, so I, I try to, with my art, I, I got, so I've always been a little bit artistic and, and love to draw or just be creative. I think more than, more than anything, just trying to come up with fun ways to do something different or a, a fun drawing or, or whatever. And I was here in Joplin in, in 2011 when we had the, the F5 tornado that came through. Right. Uh, and that's, that kind of rekindled my, uh, desire to do art. Honestly, after that, I, I've never experienced anything like that. I was, uh, my house wasn't hit, but we were about eight blocks away from wh- where the tornado came through at the time. We actually lived in, in Joplin proper during that. Um, we've since moved out, but, uh, I was within minutes, I was looking for, you know, my friends who lived in the the path of the tornado cause I couldn't get a hold of them. We drove in to, to the devastation. I didn't like it was so disorienting all of the landmarks that you kind of use to navigate your way through a town. Cause you're not reading street signs or anything. You just kind of know where you're going. I, I didn't recocognize where I was, even though it was a street I'd driven on wow. literally probably thousands of times, you know? So in the aftermath of that, you know, as the city kind of recovered and things got put back together, it was about a year later. Um, I just, I took a, I think I took a week off and was like, I just want to do something that's, totally opposite of what I've been doing here. Mm -hmm. And I had had an idea for a brook trout uh, piece of art that I wanted in my house. Brookies to me are, they're special to me because of where I grew up uh, there in East Tennessee and being the native trout in the Smokies. And uh, I just, I was like, I want to do one. And so I just wanted to do a flank, you know, just, I love the colors and the patterns on those fish. And so I did, I'd made a, a brook trout flank. I can, I'll take a picture. It's in my, my, living room now i could send it to if you want but i I made it out of wood and so i stained and painted and kind of put it all together and as i was doing it i was like this is so much fun i just want to keep doing you know stuff like this and it kind of rekindled that desire to to do those things and so sometimes you know my art is i don't know that that's a serious piece i'm not trying to communicate anything other than just like i think this fish is beautiful and and it reminds me of uh, where I grew up, but, uh, f- anything from that to the, the goofy stuff that I do, I love, you know, I've got another a drawing of a brook trout. That's a hillbilly brook trout, you know, and he's got a <laughs> feather in his hat and a, a jug of moonshine. And he's smoking a pipe, but just cause I'm like, I, I just think it's funny. And uh, the Guadalupe bass, that's holding the Texas that. yeah. flag. Yeah. yeah. Holding the flag. He's got a six shooter and he's, he's drinking a shiner and uh-huh. got a cowboy hat on, you know, just, I just like doing things that make people laugh and be like, Oh, I get it. You know, that's right. a, that's a Guadalupe cause it's a state fish of Texas or, or whatever. So anything from symbolic to just funny, um, I, I like trying to come up with, um, another thing I've done that I, I think just fun is I call them my fish flags. I try to I've always thought flags were cool, you know, just how they are symbolic of a country or, you know, what is, what do the colors mean? What do they signify? I just thought that was neat. And so an idea I had a couple of years ago was like, I wonder if you could come up with a flag that, you know, didn't just have a drawing of the, the fish that it was trying to represent, but had the colors and markings enough so that somebody that maybe didn't know or, or were at least familiar with fishing could look at it and say, Oh, I, I get that. I know what that's representing. Mm -hmm. So those have been pretty fun. I think people like them a lot of times they'll be like, what is that? You know, what's, 
what is what's on your hat or what's that what's that sticker and when you explain it to them they're like oh i see it now and i, I just think that's neat uh, it sparks conversations it makes people ask questions about what it's what it is uh, sometimes your 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 conversations don't go as well as you'd hoped i went to went to the store the other day and i had my rainbow trout hat on and uh as I was checking out, the guy was checking out. I was like, what's that hat about? <laughs> and I said, well, you tell me. What do you think it is? And he was like, I don't know, a watermelon? I'm like, man, <laughs> obviously not a fisherman. Back to the drawing board. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dang it. <laughs> That's awesome. So, people who yeah, fish I, probably would have recognized it. I'm people sure. fish, yeah, they get it. Or, or at least when you say rainbow trout, like, oh, okay, yeah, I see it now. Right. And so those have just been, those have been fun. And I, people that put their stick, my stickers on their cars or – coolers or whatever a lot of times they're like man it's been so fun people ask me all the time what is that and i get to tell them oh you know it represents this fish and this you know i i love to go fishing and this is where i go or it just it it starts that conversation with people about something that you're you enjoy and that you're passionate about so right. i just think it's fun that's awesome man yeah it's uh that's interesting because a lot of people that i've talked to have had those like um Aaron Reed will tell you, same thing with me, same thing with Barclay. Um, you know, we've had these times in life that were really hard that changed the course of our life, you know, yeah. and we like stop and step back and say, I got to do something completely different, you know? And, and actually I was living in St. Louis in 2011 when that, um, oh, really? that when that tornado hit. And I remember yeah. like for two weeks, the tornado sirens were going off like every day. All the time. Yeah. I was like, what is going on? And then that happened. I was like, it would hail. And it was, it was a wild year for tornadoes in, in Missouri yeah. that year. Yeah. And I remember seeing the pictures and, and just the devastation that came out of that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's in some ways, that's why I went with the, the word remedy um, for what I call my little business. Mm -hmm. I didn't want it to be about me necessarily, but about I wanted it to be about something else, something bigger and something that we could all be a part of, if that right. makes sense. And Absolutely. so, you know, I think fly fishing is, it is a remedy of sorts for people. And during times like this, or, you know, times like the tornado, a lot of times it's like, man, what are the things that I really want to make sure are a part of my life? What are the things that are good, that are life giving? What are the things that, you know, give me peace or, or just kind of set my mind back right what and how do i how do i make sure those things are a part of my life and i fishing for me is is definitely one of those things yeah for sure now if someone wanted to get a hold of you or check you out like where, where how would they do that? and obviously we'll put some links up to your socials sure but can you tell us a little bit about how people get a hold of you nate yeah i mean my at the website remedy provisions there's a contact uh button you can click on there and you, it has has my email, even my mailing address. If you want to do that, and there's a, a form you can fill out too, and just send, send the email. So you can do that. My email is just Nate at remedy provisions.com. Okay, great. So, well, we'll put yeah. all those links up, Nate. I really appreciate okay. you hanging out with me. Thank you for, uh, tuning me. So, so what would it take to do a remote, <laughs> no pressure animated series? I mean, is that a huge deal or is it all well, computer or how does that work? Well, when you say animated, do you mean like a, like a cartoon, like literally? Yeah. Like we all go fishing feature? together. Yeah. <laughs> we all go fishing together. In know? the cartoon. That's In what the we cartoon. do. Yeah. That's just what we do. We go fishing, hang out beside, <laughs> by a bonfire. Maybe there's a Sasquatch, right? Cause it's like Scooby Doo. Okay. So we got to figure yeah. out like it's, and really the Sasquatch, we pull his mask off and it's the owner of the campground that didn't want us there. <laughs> you know, like. I would have, have I would have had the campground if it wasn't for you measly fly fishman. <laughs> <laughs> we need to look at I've never done animation. I could do maybe a comic strip. That might might be the the limit of my talent there. Yeah, but we we should make it happen. We should cuz it's so good, man. Like <laughs> like I don't know. Maybe I'm just arrogant and like to look at myself. <laughs> Although I am the ugliest of the four. Uh so that's got nothing to be proud of, but well <laughs> <laughs> I don't you actually Davin was the last one oh, okay <laughs> okay so Aaron was lying to you okay you know I think he, he was probably joking around on the, yeah. on the text because we all know I'm more handsome than Aaron so well yeah 100%, 100%. <laughs> no but I, I really appreciate you hanging out with us we'll put those links up Nate and it was also good sure, to, to get to know get to know you a little bit and uh, and, and thank you for your time absolutely appreciate it
Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us this week on the Remote No Pressure Podcast. Bill, thank you very much. Thank you for hanging hey, out. Hey, no with problem. Me. Thank you yeah, for hanging out with us. It's a pleasure. It is always a pleasure. I'm always, I, I miss hanging out with you in person, though. It's different. Mm-hmm. I know. I know. It's been a month, hasn't it? It has. has, has uh, yeah, it's been at least a month. It's been crazy. Crazy. It is. But uh, pretty soon it'll be dry fly season. Pretty soon you and I will be out on the uh, on the flat fishing for smallies again. Yes. I can't. I can't wait, Phil. I know. I got to get you down to that lake, uh, come by Gun Lake, and throw some flats out there too. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to do that, man. Yep. Very looking forward to it. And you guys, yep. uh, everyone tuned in. Thank you for so much for listening. Be sure to check us out at remotenopressure.com. Do us a favor, give us a follow on our socials, especially the YouTube channel. We need a thousand subscribers. Mm. We're looking for do that. That's our goal. So do us a favor, and even if you don't uh, do anything else, just check out YouTube channel. Also, check out our store at remotenopressure.com. Uh, we have a lot of cool decals on there. Uh, our Sasquatch, not a buff buff. That is actually will will um, it will actually give one hundred percent guarantee to keep you safe from any kind of Sasquatch attack, or your money back, or your money back. Now it does not cover bear, you know, bear someone else like you know they can't tell the difference, but we know for a fact that this will protect you from any kind of Sasquatch attack. Uh, mm-hmm. We're not allowed to call it a buff; that is a copyrighted term, so it's it's not a buff buff that we have. Um, yeah, and so check that out. Yeah, 10 bucks for that. We got some great price on decals, some CDs, all that good stuff. Be sure to go check out remotenopressure.com. And until next time, go fishing.